Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. Today we are going to take a look at a message from your inner child and the reason I've chosen this topic is because this deck finally arrived. I ordered this deck quite some time ago. I think it was in, it might have been August of last year. I remember I was in Sydney, Australia and I ordered it but it didn't arrive and what happened was I contacted the owner, well the originator of the deck, the artist who made this deck, it's Eddie Pipers. Her store on Etsy is called Eddie Art. I contacted her and she said no worries I'll send you one to your new address and I am just blown away by how beautiful this is. I haven't opened it yet. What I thought I'd do is that we could unbox this together. So those of you who like to stick around for the intro, stick with me. We're going to explore this new deck together. Don't worry, I'll be drawing a card for every single group. Now, before you dash off to your group, I just want to say, please do go and visit uh, Eddie's shop on Etsy and I'm going to put the details below. She has so kindly given the audience here a voucher code and you can use that voucher code. I'll put the voucher code in the description below. You will be able to get 10% off all of her beautiful creations and I mean just look at the illustration here. Isn't that incredible? What she's got on her shop is just stunning. She's got art prints, she's got children's books, really affordable beautiful handmade items and you know if you're an aunt, an uncle or if you've got kids of your own or your grandparents you know you, maybe you're going to a, a kids, kids party or something like that. Look at this, look at these cute little ones here, isn't that adorable? I think this was the picture that drew me in the most but I mean they're all stunning, look at that, they're like all these little little ones on their own planet and things like that. It's just mind-blowing stuff. So we're going to explore this together. But guys, go and take a look at Eddie's shop. It is absolutely brilliant. And I know because we've got a lot of people who watch from the United States, you know, postage and all of that certainly won't be uh, any issue there. Mind you, I was in Australia and now I'm here in the UK and postage well it didn't arrive in Australia I don't know why I don't know what happened but you know uh, postage here UK Europe definitely not a problem it, it arrived in a matter of days so definitely check out Eddie Art and yeah really beautiful shop I have visited so many shops on Etsy looking for something handmade original unique and this absolutely stood out I just had to get it so if you would like to head on over to your group this time, what kind of crystals do we have? Well, we've got these. So check out your crystal. So group one is going to be the rose quartz, which we have here. And we've got this one, which I've forgotten what it is, but I think it's some kind of quartz. If I look it up, I'll put it on the screen, but that's your crystal there, group number two. And group number three has got this. Now I'm pretty sure this is black obsidian. Well, it's got a couple little chips there. I don't know. It probably happened when I moved. Ugh. Anyway, head on over to your group and I'll see you in your reading. Those of you who stick around for a bit of unboxing, let's do this. So let's open this up. I'm so excited. Oh. Wow. All right, now I'm going to try and do this without, actually I'm just going to hold it here so that I don't, so that I don't cut the box because this is so beautiful. I want to keep it really nice and intact. All right, I think I've got this bit there. There we go. Ah. All right, let's see what this is like. Oh, how exciting. I love receiving a new deck. Wow, and even just the box feels so incredible and high quality. All right, let's see what this is like. 
Oh, I see. There's also a web address here, innerchildandbeyond.com. How amazing. This is so cool. I'm going to read. There is a guidebook in here. I will read everything as well. Sometimes I don't always read the guidebook, but for this one, I just know that the guidebook is going to be really good. Okay, let's see if I can open this. Oh, I see. There's another artist here as well by Nina Mong... Mon, Mon, Mongendre and Eddie Art. Amazing. Yeah. I'll probably edit some bits of this out because I wasn't able to open the box just there. Oh, look at this. Wow. Okay, so this is the guidebook. Right. Oh, this is lovely. This is printed so beautifully and all the paper and everything is such high quality. I'm going to love this. So I'm definitely going to read that. And let's see what we've got here. Okay. This is the deck. How amazing. <gasps> Beautiful. Wow. I love the colors. I just love the colors that we've got here. Hold on, just cut this open. There we go. All right. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I love this. Wow. Oh, we are going to have so much fun with this deck, guys. I just know. It. Oh, look at that. The colors. I'm telling you, it's the choice of colors, the arrangement of colors, the design, the style, everything. Wow, look, we've got stars and planets. Oh, is that Saturn up there? Maybe. Yeah. Safety, yeah, look at that. And you can see that these were painted, I do believe. These were probably hand painted. Gosh, that's amazing. Oh, wow. Oh, sacred desire. Oh, my goodness. Guys, this is just. I am loving this. Oh, I'm going to sit and take each one of these and look at that. Wow. This, uh, this is a whole afternoon for me. This is afternoon cup of tea. It's in a child deck, so maybe even a, a slice of cake. I do happen to have a cake that I baked in the fridge at the moment. Wow, look at that. I'm practicing. I'm, I, did, I made a practice cake because um, I want to give my neighbors, I want to bake their kids a cake. Anyway, right, guys, feel free. As you know, choose between group one, group two, or group three, and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group number one. If you chose group number one or this beautiful rose quartz crystal, then you are in the right place. Now, I have been shuffling this new deck, which I just love. It's amazing. It's a really, really, really beautiful deck. I think I will, if not this afternoon, well, definitely on the weekend, I'll have time to sit with this and study it in detail. It is so beautiful. I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. I'm just so excited to receive this. Let's see. Okay. This will be the first card ever drawn from this deck so you are the first group number one and me too I didn't even draw one for me this is all for you guys all right so that is the first card um shall we look at it now or let's let's draw a couple more because what I wanted to see as well was we'll do we'll do this as like message from your inner child but we'll also with this archetypes deck we'll see who is your inner child showing up as I thought that would be an interesting thing to explore as well the other thing that we've got if you are watching this kind of you know within a week or two of the 5th of May there could also be some kind of eclipse message that comes through 
we'll take a look we'll see but I think there is yeah I don't know I thought inner child would be a good energy to work with for now we'll take one of these and here we go and let's take one of these as well all right here we go let's see what comes through wow this is really exciting okay so let's kind of organize everything all right let's see what comes here Ooh, I love the yellow color that's beautiful let's see if we can zoom in and see what's going on oh this is so sweet everyone's putting a little crown on each other wow 17 recognition that's great oh this is so sweet this is really nice and um, you know maybe this is well this might be your inner child recognizing you recognizing you saying thank you for taking care of me you know that if if they could they would crown you that's wonderful aha uh -huh. okay child wounded yes light attributes so we've got awakens compassion and desire to serve other wounded children yep opens the learning path of forgiveness absolutely and anytime we have you know this word wounded especially when as it comes from caroline mace she always talks about the wounded healer that's a big archetype that she's done lectures on let's have a look at the shadow attributes here blames all dysfunctional relationships on childhood wounds right resists moving on through forgiveness yeah and that is you know the process of maturing of growing up of recognizing that you can take care of yourself and can take care of all aspects of your own life on your own you know that's that process of of maturing being responsible for for our own lives for our own selves right and that that process we're all going through that even if we're like you know in our 70s or 80s like we've all got some growing up to do so don't worry if you know um yeah if there are still elements of childhood that you know you're still maturing or moving through or whatever it is louise hay talks about this and even in her i think her 70s 80s even with the amount of spiritual and soul work she did in her life you know she still said that yeah i'm still not fully there you know she would say that i've still got elements and work that i need to do and you know you'd think wow how does she have anything left to do because in her later years her life well in, in 3d sense looked really perfect you know she was even parking her car she had a rolls royce which she would park on red carpet you know i mean you'd look at the life and think wow what what problem does she have you know but that's the thing we've all got work to do it's all ongoing regardless of outer circumstances or what your life looks like or whatever everybody's got their work you know uh, and we're all just going through it all right woman holding a coin 42 nice we might dig into that because i'm not getting any immediate sense of what this is so we'll explore that workaholic okay i think you've been working hard and if there's a message from your inner child it is that you need to take time off you need to have fun you need to just just do something that you wouldn't normally do um yeah what what is it what is it that you can do 
perhaps this weekend, you know, that is not work-related and that is just pure fun. What can you do this weekend just for pure fun? I think that's much needed. You know, you've got to play. You've got to have fun. All right, let's take a look. What's going on here? Why is there a woman holding a coin? What is this about? So we're going to check that out with this. Get some tarot going. This is the happy tarot. I thought this is a bit sort of inner childlike, sweet sort of illustrative style. Okay, so we're confirming on her. Let's see. All right, that is the Queen of, now I'm pretty sure this is the Queen of Wands, and we've got a lot of red colors. It's really interesting. Look at the colors that we've got here. We've got, now that is, we've got purple here. So it's like maybe it's your sixth chakra, maybe you're thinking about a woman at this time. But it's like you've got a lot of um, manifestational energies here. You've got reds and pinks and yellows and oranges. So it's like your first three chakras. I think one of the reasons why this has come up is that there's possibly some clearing that you're doing in those first three chakras. But also manifestation work as well. Because we've got the woman holding a coin and here we've got the queen of wands. So I th and we've got the workaholics. So I think you have been busy building your material life. And I think the focus of your world has been very much about the material external world. You've been very career focused, money focused, building the life. Okay, so we've got a sense of that. Anything else here about women holding a coin? I think you've been quite work focused. Oh wow, so this would be, okay now I have got to think about this. This is, that's justice here. Yeah, that's the weighing scales. Apologies guys, that took me a little while. <laughs> I'm kind of like going, hang on a minute, what's this? That's justice, all right. Yeah, so I think this is about, well, balance. I think you need some balance in your life because I think you've been overworking and we have a wounded child here as well, inner child. So there's like, perhaps right now, yeah, it's been all work and no play, very much. That is a message that we've got here. Life has been all work, no play, and that's not right. You know, this, you, you gotta have some fun. You gotta do something, what do you have to do? Let's see, let's get some guidance. So what would be good for you at this time? We'll check it out with this deck. We'll see what would be good for you. So recognition, let's take this as, what does your inner child want you to do? Like clearly go out and play, go out and have fun. All right, this is coming. Nine of Pentacles, yeah. I think this has come here to say that recognize how enormously abundant that you already are and that it's kind of like, I'm getting the message, and interesting, we've got yellow here again and I was clarifying on this. This is so interesting because it's like, you are abundant, you are powerful, you are confident, you, have, you, you would have a superb third chakra right? What I think is out of whack and out of balance is possibly your second chakra and the upper chakras as well. There's such a focus on, on work, on earning, but there is this message of you are already very abundant. Enjoy where you are. It's kind of like if you put heaps more effort on work what is it bringing back possibly not much because there's only like 24 hours in a day let's say let's say you were to work 
like all the time. But there's something about that that is so unhealthy. Like you can't, like overworking at some point, it's just unnecessarily burning effort. So interesting. And we've got these people in the hallway and I'm being distracted now as well. Interesting. Are you being distracted? Let's see. Let's shuffle about this because it's normally super quiet. What's taking your attention? No, they've gone away. All right. Interesting. But that's where the, the message, I wanted to communicate this message about like, if you do lots and lots and lots more, it's actually not going to bring any result or anything. It's like there's a limit to how much you can work that will be effective. And if you go over that, that work that you're doing is just, is kind of, the energy will be wasted. That was the message I was trying to bring up, but then I got distracted by people in the hallway. Okay, why were those people in the hallway? Why, what are we being distracted by? What's the distraction? So maybe when you work as well, like you get just, or there are distractions or distractions, king of wands. All right, no, that's good. But yeah, sometimes the fiery men like this, so the, um, I'm thinking of the knight of wands and yeah, they, they can be distracted. They're not so focused. Let's get another one here because I'm kind of asking about the workaholism, the, you know, like you, you, you're doing too much work, but it's not going to bring in uh, any result. So you might as well stop working and with the remainder time, have fun, you know, that'll be so much better for your whole life. Let's have a look here. Because there's something about overburning. Overburning. Look at that. King of Wands, fire, Queen of Wands. There is a lot of it's like you're overburning. It's like Yeah, there's something about overburning or like, you know, if like you can't keep burning charred wood or something. Like once it's charred and burnt and done, like that's 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 it. Something like this is a message that really wants to come through. Okay, let's take one more for over here. And then we might get, might get a couple of um, quotes from the jar. Six of swords. Yeah. Okay. So this is a message of leaving something behind. And I think this is a message of leaving work at work. So it's like when you clock off for the day, you've really got to just leave work behind and not think about it, not you know, and, and um, approach your work fresh. That's really, really important because, yeah, see, I have, to, I have to be conscious of that too because I work a lot from home now. So like um, before when I used to work in an office, it was quite easy actually because I used to do, I used to do this, like I would leave when I'm on the train and I would kind of sometimes visualize all the energy of work going into the tracks. And then when I walk to my place, and as soon as I walk through my door, I would feel free. And I'm not thinking of work now. And I'll pick it up tomorrow. And whatever email or this or that, or I'll pick it up tomorrow. So it's like you need to get better, I think, at leaving your work in the hours of your work kind of thing. There was a brilliant guy, I'm, I'm sure I probably told this story on the channel here before. Uh, I've told this story a couple of times. It's about the guy who ran, I think it was Microsoft Australia. And what he did was he insisted that everybody work between the hours of nine and 5.30 only. You could not schedule a meeting before nine. You had to take an hour for lunch and you had to finish at 5.30. He would not allow any overtime. And basically the uh, sales of Microsoft Australia went, went through the roof and that guy ended up 
going to America and being Bill Gates's right hand man and all that kind of thing. So, and he wrote a book, he did a doctorate in something or other, and he wrote a book, I think the book was called Father Time. And that is proof that like, if you actually give yourself fewer hours, you might be even more productive. So learn to um, leave work at work, really, really important. Shall we take, let's take another message for over here and just see what energy wants to come through here. So this is your, a message from your inner child, which is recognizing you. I think is, is massively appreciative of all the hard work and everything that you're doing and is acknowledging that, look at that. I mean, it, the energy has come through as this king and queen sort of status. So you are, you know, doing great in so many ways. And that's all being acknowledged by your inner child. But I think it's, I think they're noting that too much work is, um, yeah, it's detrimental or it's, you know, it's not having, it's not bringing the impact. So you might as well have fun kind of thing maybe, or yeah. There is such a thing as overworking where it becomes really inefficient and it's it's not good. Birth, oh, how wonderful. So we've got here birth, new life, such as a baby, an idea, happy news, or an exciting project blossoms within and around you. Wow, that's incredible, beautiful. So it's kind of like if you can stop overworking, stop, focusing too much on building the material life or worrying about money or within the space and this is so true within the space new things come and what I've discovered is that when I've cleared space in my life uh, really wonderful new things come in it's so good like yeah you've got to clear space in your life and meditation is a great way to clear space in your life all right let's take a couple of these and then we're going to wrap up oh the sunshine is coming through man i got to do these earlier because the light it's very difficult to get the right lighting doesn't matter i think i'll just i think i'll record them all here because there's nowhere else i can do this <laughs> in sydney i had some more options of places where i could go here i'm a little bit limited okay let's take a look Oh, I love this. We do not inherit the planet from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Native American saying, yes, that's so true. Absolutely. And you do have the rose quartz here. You know, that's all about love. And yeah, maybe you have children and, you know, it's like, well, definitely, maybe you need to spend time, more time with your children, right? If you have children, maybe that's one of the messages here too. Like less time at work, more time, fun, creativity, spending time with your kids. Okay, Let's see what this one is. Oh, I love this. Samurai quote, it may seem difficult at first, but everything is difficult at first. Yeah. Exactly. So you might as well do the fun things. You might as well do the things that you really want to, right? Rather than, and you might be trapping your life force in a concept. You might be trapping your life force in the, oh, I have to pay off all my stuff first and then I can go and have fun. No, 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 have fun now, <laughs> right? Do that now. Yeah, and it may seem difficult at first to leave work behind, but you can do it. You can definitely do it, group number one. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. I would love to hear from you, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two or this beautiful crystal, you are in, I think it's some kind of quartz. I'll put it on the screen if I find out, if I remember. 
you're in the right place <laughs> if you chose this so let's shuffle by the way apologies about the light you will see my blinds and we're gonna have sun and cloud and sun and cloud I can't believe I'm complaining about the sun because here in London we should be grateful <laughs> when the sun appears this is the kind of place where if the sun appears we should be very very happy Whereas I, I'm not so happy when I'm doing pick a card because you can see all this banding. You can see my blinds. It's so annoying. I'm like, oh, but it's all right. We'll just be here and I'll bring the cards close to the camera so that you can see them in detail. And this is a card set you will want to see in full detail because it's brand new and it's so beautiful. I'm loving this deck. Just pulled the first card for group one and I loved it. Such great colors. All right, so let's take one from here. And through this reading, we can kind of see, so what message does your inner child have for you? We can also see like, who is your inner child showing up as? How do they feel kind of thing? So that's this deck here, the archetypes deck. So we can get a, a feel for how your inner child is feeling at this time or how they're coming up yeah look at that sun see we're just gonna have to i'd love to have a sort of consistent <laughs> lighting situation but it's okay you guys probably don't mind that's the other thing i always when i watch my favorite people and they and they when they complain about the lighting i'm always like I don't mind oh oh wow well we dropped that deck maybe it wants to be part of the reading okay let's take one because I didn't take any from here do you know this deck is so slippery this is the Vedic astrology deck my goodness it is super duper slippery let's just <laughs> pick all of these up oh Okay. Well, we're going to take one from here then. <laughs> what was the other deck? Oh, I see it was that colorful one. All right, well, let's take one from here. All right, we'll take them both. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. And we can see them. Saturn in the 12th, Venus looks to be in the 3rd. All right, so you got a couple of little bonus cards here. Let's see what's going on. They really want to be here. So we'll, we'll learn what that's about. Uh, we will take one of these. Okay. There we go. All right, let's see what comes. So from the inner child deck, ooh, green. Oh, I like this. Look at the colors here. Wow. Integration, I think it says, yeah. 35. I think we had 17 in group one, so we've got an eight again, interesting. I love all these triangles as well. Wow. And we've clearly got green here, so we've got the heart chakra here. Okay. Let's have a look at this. Oh, lover, wow. Yeah, we've got real heart chakra energy here, okay. So we've got light attributes, great passion and devotion, unbridled appreciation of someone or something. Okay, good. Shadow attributes, obsessive passion that harms others, self-destructive devotion. Okay. Right. Mm. Okay. Goddess of the moon. Wow. Got a seven here. 
So there might be some hidden emotions. Passion, wow. Yeah, it's like there's some hidden passion. And look at that. She's, well, you know, I like this because it's like she's so passionate about her art. She's so passionate about giving love. It's like maybe she's singing to this person here. Passion. She's got a passion for her art. Maybe she's reading some poetry or singing or something like that. Wow. Okay. Let's see. We've got Venus in the third house. Good artistic mind. Health may suffer. Excels in writing. I mean, that could be health may suffer if there's some kind of blemish or, you know, aspect or something. Uh, maybe it's conjunct something else. Um, health may suffer. Excels in writing or design professions. Better results when working for self. Soft-spoken and has many friends. All right, well, this is definitely a clear message that if you have a business idea, because we've also got third house, self-effort, you know, people who start businesses, that they've got some kind of, you know, that yeah, there might be some third house type thing or Gemini type thing. These are these are great doers. And there's something about you, you're an artist or you're a healer, I, but I definitely get a strong artistic vibe here. Let's have a look what we've got here. We've got, uh, so, look, let me go back to this. This is a clear message that you need to get on and do your, the thing that you're passionate about. And this is definitely about doing your path, sharing your art with the world, sharing what you love with the world. This is really, really important. Excels in writing or design professions, yeah. Better results when working for self, yep. Saturn in the 12th house. Supports underprivileged in foreign lands. Separation from homeland or family. Might lose money, can secretly accumulate wealth. Love solitude. Yeah, and this, that's, this is interesting here because um, supports underprivileged in foreign lands. Definitely when we've got quite significant 12th and 6th, when this line is strongly lit, uh, as it would be with a big planet here, like Saturn here. This is kind of social work. This is kind of the kind of work where you're making a difference to other people's lives. So definitely social work is seen here. Definitely service type work. And look at that. She is, you know, she's sharing her art, not with, like, th this could have been her on a big stage with lots of fancy people in the audience. No, this is, she is sharing her art with one person, you know, who's probably enormously appreciating it more than, you know, if she's on a West End stage or something like that, you know, like it's, this means more than... Yeah, there's something about this sharing and it could be just to one person but who really loves what you're doing, really appreciates you. There's something important here like where it means more. There's something about this meaning more, this kind of sharing. So... And the, the other thing is that we've got these two planets here. So we've got a 12th house planet and we've got a third house planet. It's like the, when you share your art, it will be to fewer people, but they're going to appreciate it far more deeply than if you were, let's say we had some kinder energy, right? If we had kinder energy, then it's like, well, you're sharing it on a big stage. This is not that. There's something about, and maybe this is part of your path right now, that you're supposed to be sharing your art with a smaller number of people, but who intensely love it, okay? And you may not know, you may not know 
how much your work is loved but it is possibly look at that saving someone's life I mean like look this person you know um yeah I mean it's kind of, it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's kind of keeping people here on the earth we could say right to that extent like that, that's incredible wow I've never had anything like this come through before this is pretty amazing. Let's explore it some more. So I feel like if there's a message from your inner child, I think your inner child is really saying to you to share, to share what you love. And I think what you love is maybe you're sharing that through music, through art, through painting, through... Um, and it's something exclusive, like the audience is small and exclusive for now. You don't know what it's going to be in the future, but that's not why you do it anyway. Like you do it because all this love has to go somewhere, right? Let's take a look at integration and see what that is about. Because I'm not quite sure why that word has come. Integration. So clearly this is like a heart chakra thing. And I mean, we, we can see that because... It, that's what the heart chakra does, right? It takes the energy of the first three, those material, you know, 3D kind of world material type energies of one, two, and three. The, the heart is a bit of, it's like it, it mixes, because it mixes the energy from the higher chakras, right? Which is, that energy is being depicted here. Also, we've got a lot of blue here. So the higher chakras, where all the thoughts and ideas and inspiration and in the heart you take all that inspiration you take the material energies the heart mixes it and and births something right your heart has to be on board in order for you to do this path you can probably like take a job and if your heart's not in it you can probably still do the job and earn the money but there's something about this path that requires your heart and your love and you know, that's the whole point of what you're going to be doing on this path. And I, I kind of feel like your inner child is giving you big green lights and saying, yes, go for it. Let's go. Like it's a let's go. It's like, a, you know, we're going to have fun on that path. Let's go there. Okay, let's get a clarification on integration. This is a great spread, guys. Your inner child feels happy to me as well. Okay. Integration. All right. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. I just as soon as I say, your inner child feels happy to me. We get this uh, interesting card here. We've got the Eight of Swords. All right. So this to me kind of just feels like, but I don't know what to do. It's like, yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I like got to do this path. Got to do my art. Got to get it out there. Got to. You know, but with this one, I just get this sense of like, um, but I don't know what to do. Okay, so let's see. Let's get another card here. But I don't know what to do. All right, what else would you like to say? Oh, let's take it. Oh, all right. So the wheel is turning. We are at an eclipse point. Okay. So let's take one more. Ten of Wands. All right. So there's something. There is something about you getting to this place where you're doing your path. You're loving it. You're, you know, you're doing work that you completely love. There's something about you getting to this place that is hard. 
okay, and that is here. There might be a part of you that feels like it doesn't know what to do. That could be your inner child part because you probably do know what to do. But there's something about making this transition. There's something about making this transition that is hard. Okay, so let's take a look at that. What is hard? Take another deck as well. Hmm, let's take these both. Wow, these came quickly. I had to shuffle a lot to get that. Isn't that interesting? I shuffled for ages to get this burdensome card. <laughs> right, so that was pretty interesting. Now these two just popped out, so let's see what these are. I don't know. Yeah, Nine of Pentacles and, all right, Nine of Pentacles. It's a, look. I see this. Yeah, this is, boy, do I relate uh, to this thread. Okay, so the, your journey is going to take time. We've also got Saturn here as well. Okay, Saturn has like forced its way into this reading because I wasn't really intending to draw from this deck. So Saturn is here again. This is a very Saturnian kind of card. This is the slow journey. It's going to take time. Okay, so don't be in any form of rush. Just realize it's going to take time. You are on your way to this incredible nine of pentacles, abundance. This is a bit of a Louise Hay type card. And, you, you know, we look at what she created in her life. I mean, she, she had her own garden. She would grow her own food and look at this lady she's got all the abundance she's growing her own food she's got nature all around her nine of pentacles this is like you're enjoying life thoroughly on your own and this is you this is who you are and this is what you are everything is moving towards this place where you are earning money by doing what you love, right? It's a slow journey. It is a bit burdensome, but, you know, and I feel like this is just so like soft and gentle, like this little inner child here that's a bit like, it feels like this. Inner child is kind of going, it feels like this. It feels like I'm blindfolded. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I need to do. I don't know. Like there's this kind of, but it's so soft. Like it's not, um, you know, a typical Eight of Swords card sometimes can give a really scary vibe, but because also this is the Happy Tarot, so that's why this is soft as well. But I'm loving where you're heading towards is what I'm saying. I, I, it's Because we all have this. We all have this feeling of, I don't know what I'm doing. I watched um, Alfie Day's talk one time about how he was, I think he was making T-shirts or something like that. And he was just inventing his own way of um, making the t-shirts. And he thought it wasn't professional. He thought that's not how you do it. I'm sure the big professional companies, I'm sure they have a better way of doing it. Anyway, he asked some great big manufacturer. He's like, well, this is how I do it. Is that, is that right? And they actually said to him, oh, that's a good idea. We should do that too. And anyway, what he discovered is that Nobody knows and everybody's just making it all up all the time. Like, <laughs> because he would have thought that his way is just homemade and, you know, I don't know. And But he goes to the big manufacturers and, yeah, apparently with that particular problem or whatever, you know, they actually thought what he was doing was quite clever. So, and that's when he realized there is no such thing as the big professional people. Like, we're all just the same. Like, he thought there was some out there and, ooh, they're, you know, pros or they're better or this or that. Or you realise, oh, no, it's actually, there is no out there. <laughs> and we're all just living very similar lives at the end of the day. All right, let's see what's in here. Uh, okay, what's in this? Oh yeah, I love this one. This is great. 
Life is not a matter of holding good cards, but sometimes playing a poor hand well. Jack London. Yes, I love this quote. And you know, every now and then, this doesn't happen too often, but sometimes when I'm doing a reading with someone or for someone, uh, like a chart type thing, yes, I can see people who outperform their chart. It doesn't happen often that I end up talking about that but with some people I do and that's this life is more about and, and I think that's the excitement of a great soul like a great soul doesn't want to receive a good set of cards a really great soul is like you give me any life and I'm going to make something of it you know that's what a great soul does it's like you give me you give me any hand and I'm going to play it really well all right, let's see this. Oh, yeah, I love this quote too. I used to be afraid of the dark until I learned that I am the light and the dark is afraid of me. Yeah, that's a great soul there, right? And this comes from Ephesians. Now, I think it's 5.8. I think I wrote 6, but I got, I got that wrong. It should be 5.8 there. So I'm yet to look this one up. I will look up where does this come from. I just saw it on the internet somewhere and I took a picture of it and wrote it down. This is a great reading, guys. I am so excited for your path. I think you're doing amazing. I think this is acknowledgement from your inner child that you're doing great and just take your time with it and keep going. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose this beautiful crystal, then you are in the right place. The sun has disappeared behind clouds, which I'm actually kind of happy about because we've got a nice <laughs> flat, <laughs> even looking surface. All right, let's take a look at this. I've been loving this deck. It's so beautiful. The illustrations on here are just really, I just love this deck. I know I'm going to use it a lot. I hope I use it a lot. There's also Kathy Nichols, that flower deck. I love that a lot too. That's a really special one. This one's really special too. I just, yeah, I love it. Also because it's inner child as well which I think is such a fit for tarot because doing tarot, yeah, it is a very kind of inner child type thing. I know my inner child loves it. All right, let's see what is in here. So this could be, this could be who your inner child is showing up as. So we're going to have messages from your inner child we're also going to have, yeah, maybe who your inner child is showing up as type thing. We'll see if the Vedic Astrology deck is needed in this reading. It didn't appear in group one. It wanted to be in group two. We'll see what happens here. I have no idea. All right, that's very obvious. Let's see what we have. Okay. Right. What's this? Ooh. Oh, abandonment. Wow, what a great picture. Gosh, I love that. What's, the, what's that? Oh, it's a little teddy bear in a blanket. I think that's what that is. How sweet. Gosh. Well, it's a little bit sad. <laughs> I think the teddy has been abandoned. <laughs> We've got three 
mushrooms, toadstools or whatever those are, abandonment seven. Okay, but I'm not getting like a bad vibe here. Well, let's see, let's see what else is gonna come. Father, oh wow. Light attributes, talent for creating and supporting life, positive guiding light within a tribal unit, yes. Shadow attributes, dictatorial control, abuse of authority. All right, so let's see what else we have. Oh, the sun, yeah, great. Wow, this is a real father type spread if ever there was one. Okay, number one, the son, the father, the king. And we've got a protection stone here as well. So if your father has passed to the other side, he's probably coming through and giving a message to you, you know, and maybe the two of you were really connected when you were small, or maybe you didn't have enough time with your father could be that as well maybe he's coming through saying yeah, well, let's see let's explore renewal yeah yeah that's lovely so but what if as well let's see what if dad is around this it could be his higher self that's coming through okay and there might be something where you might have felt like you didn't get enough time with your father it could be that that you didn't get enough time with him or whatever you did get it felt like not enough but see your father was always doing the best he could do with whatever he had and it feels like it's interesting because like there's a strong there's a father energy coming through there's a renewal here so it's like even if let's say for example father has crossed over to the other side he's not around he's coming through he's saying look i'm forever connected with you you know i've also got some clients who they never got to meet their father you know some of my clients they're adopted. Um, some of them had father leave when they were really small. You know, father could be out there. He could be alive, but the connection isn't good here on earth. But there's something about his spiritual self, his higher self that is coming through. I'm getting like a message of, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. We can renew, you know, we can, like, everything heals. Wow, there's some, there's some big energy here. There's something quite kind of sacred or something. Let's take a look. Let's see what I want to look at. We'll have a look at renewal. Also, you could be a father as well, you know, and maybe this is a message to renew your relationship with your kids or spend more time with your kids as well. Um, there are lots of possibilities about this, but it's like the father energy is coming through. And we all have a father. Do you know, this is amazing because yesterday I was watching Piers Morgan interview the Australian Prime Minister. Like I just watched it because, I don't know, it was dinner time and I thought, oh, let's have that. Um, like while I cook, I like to listen to something. And I was pretty amazed because uh, Albanese, the Prime Minister of Australia at the moment, he, he never met his father until very late in life. In fact, I think he lived like something like the four, first 14 years of his life or so, thinking that he wasn't even alive. And I think it was after his mother died, he decided he he found out that well dad is actually alive and he he went and he ended up meeting him i mean it's the most incredible story you know 
Oh, all right. Well, it's gone back in. Okay, I didn't even see it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, the father energy is just, it's really profound. It's really amazing. And um, everybody's got some slightly different version of how it is for them. But what I sense is there's a father energy coming through. And, and just saying I love you, you know, and, and that is, and I did watch the um, Thomas Markle be interviewed as well, um, yeah, and he just, you know, wanted to say to his kid, hey, I love you, you know. All right, let's take a look. Let's see, let's ask about renewal. Yeah, there's something in this relationship here that's been hard, that's been really difficult. We've got, this is the Nine of Swords. But there's something about this that is shifting now that is going to change. So it's not going to be like this always, right? And I'll keep that on camera there. But we'll keep renewal on top because there's something being renewed here. Let's just explore a little bit further. Let's take a look at abandonment as well. We'll see abandonment. What do we have here? All right. Wow, the wheel. Okay, we've had that today. All right, so it, it's like this story is progressing. It's not, and it, the, the, it probably has been tough, challenging, difficult. I'm getting the word karmic, like some karma has had to be. Um, yeah, look at that Ace of Cups. Yeah, okay, so there's some major, there's like, okay. There's some healing, big healing coming in here for whoever's watching this with your relationship with your father or for you as a father or so this is love. This is the Ace of Cups, right? This is, this is just the best, most loving card you can possibly have. So there's a, there's a healing here taking place. All right, and the way to experience the healing is to be in present time. You just want to be in present time and let the feelings out. Like if you are, if there's been pain in this relationship, if there's been that's old energy that you just might have to let come through you at this time, but there's a major renewal, there's a healing here. So much love is just going to come in and wash all of this away right so and it's kind of like you are ready like you're ready to allow this to be healed which is great right that's great for you because your readiness is like you've matured to a place where this can now just be washed away this can now be cleared up. Let's see what else might want to come through. Let's take a look at the sun, but as you. So yes, we've all got a father. You might be a father, but what about just the inner father that is in you? So this is your creative impulse, Let's see, I want to ask something about a message just, just for you, just connecting with you, with your creativity. All right, so we've got the Seven of Swords here, which I'm going to say is, and this is you. One of the things I see with, because she's wearing a mask, 
because I'm thinking about your creativity, your expression. It's like maybe you haven't been able to express or be your true full self in front of your father or something like that. Okay, so let's keep that there. I might use another deck. So I'm going to use this one here. And I want to ask a little bit about this. Because like, the, like with the relationship with father, it's like, yeah, he, he may not have at times been the best or whatever, but like you're here too. So there's some like, yeah, so there's something. Okay, so you may not have been speaking up or you might be masked or feel like you can't speak. Why is the Seven of Swords here when we're looking at you? Page of Pentacles. Hmm. Okay. And we'll get another one. Page of Pentacles. Oh, the Empress. Yeah, see this, what I was, it's interesting. Because you're a great soul. But it's like, when dad's around, maybe you don't feel that way. Yeah, this could and this could also be like authority. So if this isn't father, this could also just be authority. This could even be be something playing out at work or something like that. But you are the empress, like you're mm. father could even be on a pedestal or something about like mm, because the father energy is quite huge, like it's massive in our lives. Like it's it's the world, I tend to think. And mother is, like mother teaches us more our internal world and emotions and the inner stuff. Whereas father is the world. Father is, you know, big jobs and traveling and university and you know I don't know all the big things in life right I know that's how I tend to see father energies like the big outside world and the mother is sort of the internal self and it's kind of like there's something about the father energy maybe that where it's made you feel small and like you haven't been able to be your grand self while he's there. But I kind of feel like, I think there's a recognition of that. And I think that he's coming in to say, be your full self. Like, be your full grand self, whether I'm here or not. Yeah. There's definitely something being washed away. Wow. This is, this is amazing. And you know, we've got um, an eclipse. An eclipse coming tomorrow. Let's get let's get a final word from here. Wow, big energy guys. Big reading this one. Let's get a final message from here. And then if we want to clarify on this, we can.
Oh, <laughs> let's keep it. Oh, Beth. Wow, amazing. We had that. All right, let's take a look. Let's hang on. I'm going to put this down. Wow, that is pretty amazing. Birth, new life, such as a baby, an idea, happy news, or an exciting project. Blossoms within and around you. Yeah. Yeah, and we've got the Empress here too. Look at that. Gosh, that's amazing. That is really, really amazing. All right, so let's take, um, let's, this has been such a beautiful reading, guys. Sorry, it's, I've had some gaps in my delivery. <laughs> uh, okay, just stunning energy and just be with it. There's some healing that's coming in for you. I think there's an eclipse tomorrow, yeah, so maybe there's some some major thing that's being cleared away, washed away, healed with love, washed with love. It's like, I feel like you don't have to do very much. You just have to be. Let's see what comes in here. And you're being protected the whole time, right? All right, what do we want? Oh, three, let's take them. Yeah, <laughs> because we kind of, we've, yeah, we've sort of come to the end already. Let's take all three. Thinking is difficult. That's why most people judge. Yeah. Yes. There could be, could have been some judgment in, in the relationship here uh, from either side. Wow, yeah, the world will ask you who you are. And if you don't know, the world will tell you. Yes, this is that thing I was saying about, um, gosh, what was I saying? I was saying that the father and the world energy to me are kind of the same. So you could even replace this with like the father will ask you who you are and if you don't know the father will tell you. Yeah, this is kind of, this is like you need to say, you need to be you regardless of what he thinks or if he judges you. We've got this judgment thing here. Yeah, yeah right? You need to be you. You need to be your full self, whoever, whatever that is. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Let's take this last one. I think this is a samurai quote, if I'm not mistaken, because I can tell it doesn't have a bend in there. Let's, <laughs> let's create a little bend. There we go. All right, what's this? Greatness is not the absence of humility. It is the absence of apathy. Samurai quote. Yeah. You need to step into your greatness. And your father is super proud of you. And yeah, that's, wow, that's interesting. So this is, it has been an inner child message. Even the father has come through really strongly. I think this is a real indicator that your father regardless of whatever happened in the life whatever did or didn't happen in the life it doesn't matter it's his higher self is coming through for you and it's come through for your inner child which is always being protected and looked after really incredible reading group number three please do let me know how you got on in the comments below I absolutely love reading your comments and I look forward to seeing you next time.